and welcome to this episode of In Focus, brought to you by the Uongozi Institute. I'm your host, Guamaka Kifukwe. On tonight's program, we're here in Arusha, Tanzania, at the African Court of Human and People's Rights, where we'll be speaking to Honorable Justice Augustino Ramadani, President of the Court. Honorable Justice Ramadani has previously served as the Chief Justice for Tanzania and before that, the Chief Justice of Zanzibar. We'll be speaking to him about the challenges of strengthening the rule of law on the continent of Africa. We hope you enjoy the program. Honorable Justice Ramadani, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you very much for hosting us here in Arusha. <laughs> so I just, I just want to get started to build a bit of context for the audience. Um, what do we mean when we hear this phrase, rule of law? Like, what, what does that mean? Well, rule of law is a very detailed and comprehensive subject. But briefly, what rule of law means is that nobody is above the law. Every person is, has to behave, has to act, and to conduct himself or herself and affairs according to law. So it is a, a, a principle uh, which safeguards against arbitrary rule. It's a principle which safeguards against uh, dictatorship. You, you, you cannot do something and then go and pass a law to justify what you have done. There has to be a law beforehand. And then you are required to do everything according to the law as it is. Briefly, that is what it is, the rule of law. Yes, but why is this so important? I mean, surely what, what you've just described, that there has to be you know, something in place that guides what you do. Can that not sometimes inhibit progress as well? Rule of law is important because uh, human beings, being what they are, uh, they don't want to be restricted. And uh, they want just to do what they want to do, uh, regardless of the rights of others. But when you start talking about rule of law, you are talking about human rights and how to conduct them. So that uh, I cannot wake up in the morning and decide to do anything I want to decide. It has to be according to a predetermined law. It's very important, otherwise anybody, and especially the administrators, can uh, wake up one morning and give an order which is not uh, based or backed by any law. So it's there really to protect you? It protects individuals, it protects citizens, it protects uh, life. And I suppose also then enables you to have an order to, 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 to know exactly, so that you know exactly what, what it is all about. Sure. Uh, rather than just waking up in the morning and somebody comes and gives you orders and whatnot. So rule of law is really important for democracy, for human rights, even for development. And, and, and sticking to this broad idea, there's still the concept level, what kind of mechanisms you know, are we familiar with in terms of protecting and enhancing and implementing the rule of law? Well, what mechanisms we have, one of them is uh, the law itself. Because then the law will provide who acts and when and how. But apart from that, there is also the question of uh, separation of powers, where you have uh, the executive, uh, you have the legislature, you have the judiciary. And each of these three uh, arms of government, it has got its own powers, its own limitations. And each one checks the other. So you have no, not only the separation of powers, but checks and balances. For instance, uh, parliament can pass a law, but then through what we call uh, judicial review, uh, the court will check whether the law which has been passed is in accordance to the constitution of the country. Uh, then also the government or 
ministers and whatnot can make a decision. And then you can go to court so that the court then will see whether the decision or the action which a minister or the government, the executive has taken, is that supported or is by law? Or is it just a whim of somebody? And on the other hand, even the, the judiciary, we, we are not just going to do whatever we want to, to do because whatever we do, uh, we have to write our judgment to give our reasons and explain why we have decided the way we have decided. That is also a check and a balance. So again, sticking to the overall um, kind of concept, what are the main challenges to this concept of the rule of law? The major challenge is one, is education. Uh, performance, people have to know that there is this doctrine of rule of law and what it is all about and have to accept to be controlled uh, by the provisions of the law. Uh, you should know that, uh, well, okay, uh, I am a regional commissioner, but as a regional commissioner, I have my powers and I have my limitations, what I cannot do. And that should not be taken to be weakness. No, it's not weakness. Because sometimes people will take that to be weakness. As a regional commission, I cannot do this. Uh, well, you have to do everything according to the law, to what you have been given. So uh, the major challenges are those uh, for officials to know uh, about the rule of law, to know the law which govern whatever field he or she is dealing with, to know what powers he or she has and what limitations he or she has. So education, I think, is the most, uh, the most uh, challenge. Even, even citizens, uh, for instance, there is this question of mob justice where just somebody shouts, thief, and the flock come to you, beat you up. Nobody is prepared to ask or to know you have been called a thief. What have you stolen? From whom have you stolen? No. The only name, thief, is enough for you to be even lynched and killed. And when you go there, you start asking people, what has he done? What has he stolen? No, I just had this. No, I don't know, but I had people. So, so even the people themselves, uh, they have to know their limitation. Even if you are sure that somebody is a thief, your position, your jurisdiction is to stop him from making further uh, damage, take him to the proper channels, take him to the police. The police will deal with him. The police, of course, will take him to court and whatnot. So it's a question of education, knowing what are your powers, what are your limitations uh, with respect to whatever you are doing. And, and I wanted to spend like a little bit of time now thinking of the, the African court that we're presently in. What role does the court play really in, in strengthening the rule of law? Um, to start off with, you know, when was it established and, and maybe even before that, why was it established? Well, the court started with uh, what we call the African Charter of Human and People's Rights. And this charter, or sometimes they call it the Banjul uh, Charter, uh, because uh, that charter uh, was adopted in Banjul, uh, uh, Gambia. And uh, that charter creates the Commission for Human and People's Rights. And the Commission of Human and People's Rights has got two functions. One is to promote uh, human rights and people's rights. And the second is to protect human rights and uh, people's rights. Now, 
Unfortunately for the Commission, they were and they, they still do uh, get uh, complaints, which they call information. Uh, they, co they get them, do some research and investigation, and make up decisions with their called recommendations. But these recommendations are not binding on states. So they will give a recommendation to a state about the violation of a certain rights, but they are not binding on the states. So the leaders and heads of states of Africa and, and, and also heads of government felt that they needed a certain body, organ, which can make binding decision, uh, which uh, states have to comply with. So they came up with a protocol. Now, the protocol is the one which has established the court. And the protocol has established the court, uh, making the court uh, complementary to the Banjul Commission on the issue of or on the jurisdiction of protecting human rights and people's rights. So as a result of that, the protocol, uh, the courts now hear cases uh, on human rights and people's rights, and they make decisions, and these decisions are binding on the states. But the protocol to come into force, uh, states have got to ratify that protocol. And so far, out of 54, African states, only 30 have ratified the protocol. But not only that, the protocol again provides for making of declaration. Uh, each country has got to make a declaration which allow individuals and NGOs to come directly to the court. Now, out of those 30 countries which have made, uh, which have ratified the protocol, only Eight countries have made the declaration, allowing individuals to come directly to us. Uh, the protocol was adopted, came into force in 2006, uh, September. And this year, 2016, September, we are, the court is going to be 10 years old, because uh, 2006, uh, September, that is when the court came into being and started working. In, in effect, would, would this be considered almost like an African high court in that sense? Is that how it relates to other courts or is it...? Well, you can call it uh, something like the, the, the highest court in, in Africa. But uh, it, it does not work that way, not like the Court of Appeal of Tanzania is the powers of the Court of Appeal of Tanzania is with respect to the High Court of Tanzania and subordinate, subordinate courts. No. With this court, you have to exhaust local remedies. Here in Tanzania, you have to go to the High Court of Tanzania. Then you have to go to the Court of Appeal of Tanzania. And only after you have gone up to the uh, Court of Appeal of Tanzania and you are still satisfied, dissatisfied, you think that your rights have not uh, have been violated, then you come to our court. And that is what we call exhaustion of local remedies. You have to exhaust local remedies. Unless there are no local remedies to be exhausted, or unless uh, exhausting these local remedies will require you to go in a lengthy way, then our court can take up the case and go with it and provide uh, rights to you. So you work quite closely then with, with national courts in those eight countries I think you mentioned it was? We don't really work very closely to, those, uh, to, to the national courts, no. Uh, but after the, the national courts have finished, that is when we get in. So yes, we get the court records uh, from these national courts. Uh, an applicant will have to file the court records from these national courts showing what has transpired and what not, and then to show that uh, they have exhausted uh, local remedies or uh, why they have not exhausted local, local remedies. And then 
we take over from there. But actually, there is hardly any relationship uh, between this court and the national court. Unlike the East African Court of Justice, for instance, that uh, the treaty of the East African uh, community uh, provides for some sort of relationship between the East African Court of Justice and the national courts of Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda. And now uh, I've just said that uh, Southern Sudan has joined in. And, and just a final kind of question on, on how you relate to other institutions. What about international bodies like the International Court of Arbitration or the International Criminal Court? Is there any kind of relationship or overlap between, say, this court and, and these other international, more global courts? Is it a hierarchical? Is it a partnership? Or are they completely kind of separate entities that don't really interfere with each other? No, we don't have any relationship. We are totally separate. Uh, ours is for human rights. While you, if you take the, 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 the ICC, for instance, that is, uh, on, has got criminal jurisdiction, which uh, cases which go to them are on criminal matters. We don't entertain any criminal cases here, unless you can take that criminal cases and argue a violation of human rights, and that is when it can come to us. So we have, don't have that. But there are also other human rights uh, courts. For instance, you have got the Inter-American uh, Court of Human Rights uh, with its seat in Costa Rica, uh, San Jose. We are, again, we don't have any relationship. We are trying to, to create this relationship. I was in uh, uh, Costa Rica just about uh, January. I was there trying to see if we could do some uh, cooperation. And actually, we have signed a memorandum of understanding. There is also, in Strasbourg, the European Court of Human Rights. But again, we are not having any relationship. We are trying to create those relationships. But there are no relationships which have been put there by law, as it were. No. The only other relationship is that uh, when cases come to us, we look to these other jurisdictions, like the uh, Strasbourg, the European Court, or the Costa Rica Inter-American Court, to see whether what they have decided on probably similar cases which are before us. And in our judgment, we look into those cases uh, of these other courts and see what they've decided and see how we can uh, emulate or use those decisions to assist us in coming to correct and right decisions. And, and, and now kind of focusing our attention on, on the rule of law and the challenges specifically to, to Africa. You've mentioned the education both for the governors, as it were, and, and the governed. But you also here mentioned that there was only about eight countries that had ratified. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you build the case that you know, this court is there to, in people's interest, both the states and the governments, and, and get more people to, to sign up and have access to the court? I mean, what, what challenges do you face on the continent, you as a court, but in, again, broadly with the rule of law? What, what are we seeing on the continent that means that there's at least a perception out there that rule of law is not adhered to, to a large extent, across the continent? Well, first of all, it is 30 countries which have ratified, and only eight countries which have made the declaration. We get, I, I, can, I, I fail to understand why countries, African countries, are not ratifying uh, the protocol. Because it is the heads of states and governments who adopted uh, this protocol. And why they don't uh, sign up? But we can operate. Uh, indirectly, because a matter can be taken uh, by, uh, by individuals or NGOs to this Banjul Commission. And then the Banjul Commission, if in its discretion feels that uh, that matter ought to come to or brought to our court, then they can bring it to our court. For instance, we have a case of the Egoic uh, tribe of the Mao escarpment in Kenya. Now, these went to the Banjul Commission, and the Banjul Commission felt that it should 
refer the matter to us. So the matter is with us uh, and is still with us now. We are dealing, uh, looking into it so as we can write our decision on that. Yeah, but um, sometimes some of these countries feel that, uh, well, allowing their individuals and NGOs to come to us is that they're going to wash their data linen in public. But we tell them that with this notion or doctrine of exhaustion of local remedies, there's no data linen to be washed because all that is to be said has already been said in the domestic courts. For instance, Mtikila came to our court, the late Mtikila, with his uh, case of uh, independent candidates. Now, that case was canvassed through the High Court of Tanzania, the Court of Appeal of Tanzania. So all that there is to be said about that case has already been said in Tanzania. So when it comes to us, or when it came to us, there was nothing new. All that was said in this court had already been said. So there is nothing like washing data linen in public. But also sometimes some of the uh, countries feel that the moment they do that, then they are all going to open a floodgate. So more and more cases will be coming from their countries to this court. It's a possible. Uh, but, it, but this court is, has got responsible judges. Uh, they can only entertain those cases which they feel that uh, they should be entertained. Otherwise, we dismiss, we have dismissed a number of cases because they don't satisfy the conditions which have been put for those cases to come to us.